A new anonymous whistleblower has elaborated on the U.S. drone program abroad and some of the questionable activity that's taking place under President Obama's watch. Now, it was always known that there were so-called kill lists and drones involved in civilian deaths in countries like Afghanistan, Iraq, Somalia, and Yemen. But it turns out that the situation is much worse than we even expected, and I'm about to give you the details. Now, Jeremy Scahill and a team of reporters at The Intercept have spoken to this anonymous source, who again is a whistleblower who chooses to remain anonymous, and they've done an excellent report, a number of reports, on what's happening with the drone program. Now, according to The Intercept, taken together, the secret documents lead to the conclusion that Washington's 14-year high-value targeting campaign suffers from an over-reliance on signals intelligence and an apparently incalculable civilian toll and, due to a preference for assassination rather than capture, an inability to extract potentially valuable intelligence from terror suspects. Now, you're going to notice a theme throughout everything that we say, and the theme has to do with killing people as opposed to capturing them, basically putting them through trial and trying to extract intelligence from them. Okay, now, uh, I, I know what a lot of people on the right will cry, and by the way, also the left, in, in order to protect their beloved Obama, uh, is, oh, but we, it's so easy for you guys to say, but it's hard to capture these guys. No, no, I, I know, I get it that it's hard to capture people, but oftentimes we do do it. And by the way, on the instances that we have done it, this is the first show to come out and say that was wonderful, that's exactly how you should do it. We're not a against getting the bad guys, we just want to get them in a way that doesn't create more bad guys and hence more deaths and, and danger for American citizens, okay? So now you're going to see in a little bit uh, exactly how many civilians we kill uh, or <laughs> that we uh, people that we kill that we decide to categorize as non-citizens and civilians. You, you'll see that in a second. But I, for, I wanted to explain one quick thing before we give you more of the data from this uh, new report. Uh, signals intelligence, for those of you unfamiliar with it, is it's a cell phone, it's a c uh, computer IP address, it's that kind of information they're collecting on people. It doesn't mean that they know who they're bombing. They're bombing, in essence, the cell phone or the computer or whatever other signal intelligence they have gathered they think might be attached to a terrorist. Then you'll hear about the people killed around that person. But understand that even when they get what they think is their intended target, they do not oftentimes have a human being attached to that target. They just have data, metadata attached to that target. So as you'll see in one of the quotes, uh, the, the source from the government says, sometimes it's their mom. Oops. Yeah. Okay. And, and so, when they tell us here in America, oh, we're just collecting metadata on Americans, uh, it's okay, it's not attached to human beings. It's we're told that metadata is totally harmless. Now, look, don't get me wrong, they're not killing anybody in the US uh, based on metadata, but we do use metadata in other countries, the countries that we're not even in war with quite often, to kill people, to put them on a list of people we assassinate, and then we kill them or their moms. And everyone around them, but that that is what we do with metadata. We just don't do it here in the U.S. Yeah, yet. and later on we're going to show you the disparity between the number of intended targets that we kill and the number of innocent civilians that we kill, and that disparity is massive. Okay, so according to the un, uh, unnamed source, this. Outrageous explosion of watch listing, of monitoring people and racking and stacking them on lists, assigning them numbers, assigning them baseball cards, assigning them death sentences without notice on a worldwide battlefield, it was from the very first instance wrong. So obviously he has severe moral issues with what's happening abroad and he also completely understands that this is counterproductive to what the US is trying to do abroad. We're supposed to get rid of terrorism, right? This is the so-called effort that we're taking part in, but it's actually leading to much more hostility because we're killing so many innocent civilians based on very faulty metadata. So <clears throat> a lot of the people on the right wing will say, oh, you guys, I see, I knew it. The guy's biased because he has morals. <laughs> oh, I see. Wait, what? I thought Republicans were the party of morals and morality, right? No, no, they're like, oh, this guy, he's a do-gooder. He has morality. He has problems with us killing innocent people. No, you should discount his information. By the way, it doesn't matter what he thinks because what he turned over is documents, and the documents are not his 
documents, he didn't write them. They are from the government, right? That's why people will be enraged. How dare you reveal what our government does in a democracy? No, that's what American heroes do, okay? Yes. And so that's what this guy is. And the fact that he has morality is not a downside of him, it's a great upside of him. That's why he was one of the few people who had a conscience and said, maybe we shouldn't keep killing the wrong people or killing people that we don't even know who they are. Yeah, I, I love that he did that. And if you actually had real morality, you'd obviously be on his side. And are you positive we're the good guys when we say we should ignore morality? So um, let's get into some of the numbers because they're outrageous. So uh, he says, we're allowing this to happen. And by we, I mean every American citizen who has access to this information now but continues to do nothing about it. Now, two sets of slides that he provided focused on the military's high value targeting campaign in Somalia and in Yemen two countries that we have not declared war with, as it existed between 2011 and 2013, specifically the operations of a secretive unit, Task Force 48-4. Additional documents on high-value kill capture operations in Afghanistan buttress previous accounts of how the Obama administration masks the true number of civ civilians killed in drone strikes by categorizing unidentified people killed in a strike as enemies, even if they were not the intended targets. So they just start off by saying, hey, this was an enemy. We don't know whether or not this was an enemy. It could have been an innocent civilian, but we want to brush this under the rug and let's just re you know, refer to this person as an enemy. Now, the whistleblower provided um, a study, an analysis that was done by the Intelligence Surveillance and Reconnaissance Task Force, okay, that's referred to as the ISR. The ISR study also reveals new details about the case of a British citizen, Bilal El Burjawi, who was stripped of his citizenship, U.S. citizenship, before being killed in a U.S. drone strike in 2012. British and American intelligence had him under surveillance for several years as he traveled back and forth between the UK and East Africa, yet did not capture him. Instead, the US hunted him down and killed him in Somalia. Now, uh, I want to clarify a couple of things. First, real quick, he's a British citizen. Oh, and I'm sorry so about in, that. In, in working together, the British and the Americans said, oh, we got a great idea. You know how they always compare? It's so hard to capture him. But he's right there in the UK. You can get him at any time you want. No. Instead, let's strip him of his British citizenship, let him go back to East Africa, and then you guys murder him. And by the way, the U.S. has also done that with an American citizen, Anwar al-Awlaki, years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they also killed his 16-year-old son. But they didn't bother to switch uh, to strip al-Awlaki of his U.S. citizenship. They said, ah, he's a U.S. citizen, the U.S. Constitution. No, no, just execute him, who cares? His son, well, after we ex execute him, we'll claim it was an accident. Kind of, but we won't ever really explain it in public. We did that, right? I know, how dare we talk about morality. And by the way, I mentioned Republicans earlier, and you, you're perfectly within your rights to say, hey, this is President Obama, he's a Democrat who's the head of uh, the executive branch, who's making this decision, who looks at the baseball cards. I'm glad we're putting a lot of thought into it. <laughs> uh, and they have, apparently they also have folders, to be fair. You know, they were worried about binders full of women. Okay, apparently we have binders full of people we're going to execute. and. And so they look through them and they're like, all right, who should we kill today, right? It's and incredible. So now uh, it's definitely bipartisan. Bush did it, Obama did it, Obama has, if anything, expanded it. So I don't want anybody to get me wrong on that. But uh, the Republicans complain about all these conspiracies, right? Oh, Jade Helm 15, where the government is going to take over Texas. The government already has Texas, they don't need to take it over. Okay, here we have Task Force 484. It's real, it exists. We have a government insider who tells us about it. And you know what it is? It's a death panel, literally. So all the, oh my God, Obamacare is going to set up death panels. No, Obamacare actually saves people's lives. Mm -hmm. right? That's a good thing that he did. In this case, he takes lives away and not a single Republican complains about it. Okay, but All that fair. executive authority, all those executions, all the death panels they warned you about, yet when Obama does it, when Obama, who they despise, does it, not a peep. Because when you execute innocent people, oh, they love it.
It's not just Republicans, Cenk. It's Democrats as well. Oh, okay? definitely. If anything, Republicans want more. Republicans are constantly criticizing Obama for being weak on national security. How is he weak when he took Bush's policy and expanded on it? His drone program is worse than Bush's drone program. And he's been doing it for years, hasn't stopped, even though there's been a little bit of criticism. And whenever it comes to foreign policy, I think of senators like Dianne Feinstein who go on TV and they talk about how, oh, we really we need to really amp up our uh, national security and our efforts abroad because those terrorists have bombs, really big bombs. I'm quoting her verbatim there. And of course when Feinstein herself was spied in on by the CIA, then she was outraged. How dare you do that? Oh, spying on American citizens, no problem. Killing people abroad without any trial or, or evidentiary proof in any other court, totally fine. Just strip them of their rights and then murder them, right? No problem at all. Uh, you, you spied in on me? That's an outrage if you're Diane Feinstein, because you're only supposed to protect the powerful and attack the powerless. Now, if you say, hey, some of these guys are probably bad guys, yeah, they probably are. I don't I hope, and there's no evidence that they're not picking random people, like, I don't know, let's bomb that guy and that guy, right? No, they put effort in, and I'm sure if they're watching this head, their heads are exploding. No, we put a lot of effort into finding the right guys, and we had all this data, and that connected to that computer, and that computer had done a bad thing, or the guy on that computer maybe, I'm pretty sure, did a bad thing, and that connected to a cell phone from a guy who did a bad thing. I know, I know, but it, it is incumbent upon us, if we're going to claim to be the good guys, to take a lot of care who, who we execute unilaterally. Right? It is an assassination program. Don't 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 chain it. Don't call it anything else. Okay? Because you can come up with soft BS words. It's an assassination program. We have a list of people we're going to assassinate. We go and do it. Except a lot of times it's not them, and we kill a hell of a lot of people around them who are completely innocent, including their family members, moms, daughters, whoever. Who cares? They were well, guilt by association. They were near what we think might have been a terrorist. It was and by the way, oftentimes it's not even terrorists. In Afghanistan they admit, ah, we're not just going for Al Qaeda, we're not just going for Taliban. We're going for some local leaders we don't like or the Afghan government doesn't like. Oh hell, we're bombing everybody. It was only two weeks ago that a US airstrike in Kunduz killed 22 people at a hospital, all 22 of which had nothing to do with terrorism. Okay, Hospital staff and some of their patients. That's it. Okay, and, and what happened with that investigation? What happened with apologies? What happened with conceding that what the US did in that case was wrong? And also, again, even if you don't care about this so called death panel um, that's happening abroad, and you don't care about those lives because it's the US versus them, you look at them as the others, right? Consider the fact that this is exactly what leads to terrorist activity. When you're killing innocent civilians, all of a sudden you're convincing innocent people to maybe join terroristic efforts against the United States. And it's not a PC thing to say, who is them, right? It's not like, what do you mean those people? No, 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 no. We're asking a literal question. You say, oh, Afghanistan, they just bombed. But I thought you said we were going to Afghanistan to liberate them. Right. So now if you're bombing people who aren't even Al Qaeda or Taliban and it, now we're stuck in this endless cycle of violence where we do bombing and then they get mad at us and they bomb us and then we bomb them back and it never ends. Who is them? Who are we liberating and are we liberating them for their own from their own lives? We don't want to liberate them. <laughs> liberate them? That. No, what we want is a steady stream of war so that the military industrial complex keeps on churning. So let me give you some specific numbers now. Documents detailing a special operations campaign in nor northeastern Afghanistan, Operation Haymaker, show that between January of 2012 and February of 2013, U.S. Special Operations airstrikes killed more than 200 people. Of those, only 35 were the intended targets. During one five-month period of the operation, according to the documents, nearly 90 percent of the people killed in airstrikes were not the intended targets. According to Jeremy Scahill, the military designated uh, people it killed in targeted strikes as EKIA, -E -E enemy killed in action, even if they were not the intended targets of the strike. All right, I want to add one thing to that. Uh, he goes on to say, explain in the story unless evidence posthumously emerged to prove the males killed were not terrorists or unlawful enemy combatants, EKIA remained their designation according to the source. So that means, okay, we killed 35 of our intended targets, and again, we don't actually know that those are our targets. They just happen to have the wrong cell phone on them, right? Uh, then we killed 165 people that we did not intend to kill. 
Okay, first of all, that is a terrible, miserable ratio. Once again, you'll have a lot of people in this country, Republicans and Democrats, say, I mean, you know, what are you going to do? Collateral damage, war is a messy thing. So we killed 165 innocent civilians, moms, dads, aunts, uncles, children. I mean, they were, we were busy liberating them. That's why we had to kill them all, right? Okay, so now the US goes, well, if we kill them, by definition, they were an enemy combatant. <laughs> Unless you can prove after they died that they were innocent. I mean, that is literally one of the most Orwellian things I have ever heard in my life. Now, how is a dead person going to prove afterwards to the United States that they were in fact innocent? What, is our family going to do it? How would they do it? Would they hire a lawyer? Would they come to the US? Would they sue us? How in the world would they prove after they're already dead that they were innocent in the first place? Now, we know they were not our targets. We know we killed just in that little uh, Operation Haymaker. That is among many operations we've done all over. And these papers, by the way, are only about operations uh, between 2011 and 2013, that specific period. It is much broader than that. It goes all the way back to the Bush administration. We're just telling you what is provable based on government documents we now have, right? And then they go, oops, well, if I killed you, you must have been guilty. So the whistleblower had one more thing to say that I, I think you guys need to hear. He said, there's countless instances where I've come across intelligence that was faulty. So, you know, we're all told all the time here in the US, about, man, we have got this down to a science. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, we got it. And he's like, look, it's computers and it's a lot of equipment. And do they make mistakes? Of course they do. I looked, in fact, he says, sometimes you'll be working on a case for all this time. In fact, let me give you his exact quote. He said, it's stunning the number of instances when selectors are misattributed to certain people. And it isn't until several months or years later that you all of a sudden realize that the entire time you thought you were going after this really hot target, you wind up realizing that it was his mother's phone the whole time. Oops. Uh, but do those lives really matter? I mean, they're Afghans, they're Somali, they're uh, from Yemen. Do they really count? Do their lives really matter? I mean, aren't they all aren't they all just collateral damage waiting to happen?